wrong place or deliberately targeted. A gift of the giver's leader is killed in Gaza. So there's a need for the whole world to rise and call upon the Israeli government to cease fire, to stop what is happening, and we want the ICC to investigate. South Africa takes Israel to the International Criminal Court and the dangers of taking a bet on a Sun City scam. Hello, I'm Jane Dutton. This is Eyewitness News. A devastating blow for gift of the givers and the people they help in Gaza. The humanitarian aid group says one of their members, Ahmed Abbasi, and his brother were targeted while returning from morning prayers earlier today. Ahmed Abbasi was our office head for 10 years, responsible for delivering aid to orphans, widows, the elderly, taking care of patients, providing water throughout desalination plants, distributing food parcels, hot meals, and a range of other activities, helping patients in need and rebuilding homes of people destroyed. Gift of the Givers say they support the call by President Cyril Ramaphosa to take Israel to the ICC. Ramaphosa announced in Qatar that South Africa has filed a referral to the International Criminal Court to investigate Israel's war crimes in Gaza. Innocent lives are being lost and where you know, the rules of law are no longer being observed, uh, where children are just being killed. Uh, almost half of the 11,000 people who have died in Gaza are children. The Jewish Board of Deputies say they're disappointed with the government's decision. We call again on our president to call for the release of the 240 civilian hostages being held by Hamas which is clearly the biggest obstacle in the way of a ceasefire. The ANC says it'll throw its weight behind an EFF motion for the closure of the Israeli embassy in South Africa. They need to go. We need to take a bold move and say these people will go. And these people must go with immediate effect. We are not opposed to any amendment of any motion because for us, this is not political opportunism. This is not point scoring. As long as at the end of the day, we agree that the Israeli embassy must be dismissed from South Africa. Tensions are brewing at the Blayfur gold mine on the West Rand near Cottonville, where more than 800 workers have staged a sit-in underground. It's understood the mine workers have refused to resurface since yesterday morning. The labor dispute is linked to calls for incentives, including a 13th check for the upcoming December holidays. They're also calling for mine management to terminate the closed shop agreement with an in-house union. The latest incident comes weeks after a hostage drama at a Gold One mine on the East Rand. A Christmas present for all South Africans. Motorists may pay less for fuel in December. As the Automobile Association predicts, another fuel price decrease. The association says unaudited data from the Central Energy Fund show a decrease of between one rand five cents and one rand six cents for both grades of petrol, while a two rand decrease in diesel is expected. Both grades of petrol are currently trading at over 23 rand a litre, while diesel is at more than 24 rand a litre. This after fuel prices decreased this month, following three months of fuel price increases. The Competition Commission says it is looking into whether criminal charges could be brought against banks who stand accused of rigging currencies. UK-based Standard Charter Bank is one of these banks and has admitted to manipulating the US dollar rand exchange rate between 2007 and 2013. Following lengthy litigation, an agreement has been reached for the bank to pay more than 42 million rand in administrative penalties. The SEB is one of 28 banks who have been accused of manipulating exchange rates in attempts to maximize profits. Well, the, the evidence we have is the chart. The, the charts they were posting in the Bloomberg charts indicated that they were manipulating the the currency pair of the South African brand and the U.S. dollar, they have to answer to the allegations. And when they answer to the allegation, that's where the real action will be. If it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Sun International has warned holidaymakers about a bogus 25 rand Sun City Resort 
accommodation deal. The scam is currently circulating on social media. The post states that the offer is in celebration of the resort's 50th or 55th anniversary. But Sun City opened in 1979, making it just 44 years old. Sun International is making an appeal to all the visitors to not respond to any of the social media posts offering accommodation and breakfast into any of the Sun City Resort hotels. If anyone wishes to make a booking, they must do so by visiting the Sun International website, which is www.suninternational.com, or by booking directly through our booking engine. And that's it from me. Make sure you like and subscribe. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.